I've had sex with some of the most beautiful people in the world. It's not that interesting. I've made peace with the fact that this will probably not be monetized. Yeah, you're making no money off of this yeah. video. <laughs> you may even like lose your YouTube channel. <laughs> I think. It's me, Mario. What is up, my friends, and welcome back to Uncensored. And guys, today I'm excited. We have a YouTube legend in the house, okay? He was actually one of the first people I watched on YouTube when I was growing up in my hometown in Alpisbach im Hochschwarzwald, Germany. So give it up for Davy Wavy. That's fucking thanks, th thanks for having me. So yes. fun to be here. That's so random. I love it. And you're in Rhode Island right now, right? Live from Rhode Island in my Christmas Yo, cottage. I was just telling you, it looks magical. It looks, <laughs> it looks like German. a fake background. <laughs> it does. It looks like one of these Zoom backgrounds where yeah, you just totally transport does. yourself into a different yeah. world. That's amazing. So what made you, because we're just talking about, like, I'm in West Hollywood, you know, you would expect that. Um, so you used to live in WeHo, right? I used to live in West Hollywood. Yeah, when I was your age, I was doing the West okay. Hollywood thing. Yeah, probably My sucking a, a bit more dick than you are, I think. But, you know. What, what do you say? Sorry, I just got a phone call in that moment. One second. I said I was probably sucking a bit more dick than you are, but... <laughs> Ah, yeah, 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 no, I've, I've never, I've never sucked a dick unless it was for my career, you know, so that's how, that's how we do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny though, it was not, um, it was more like I got a lot of offers to get my dick sucked, you know, that was kind of like the, the agreement when I was modeling, interestingly enough. Well, and, and, and this is where I think that gay guys go wrong, because you can get your dick sucked by women, like that's not, there's nothing interesting about that, what they should actually be doing is offering their dick for you to suck because oh, that's at least okay. something novel and interesting. Do you know what I mean? Like I think guys yeah. are going about it the wrong way. Yeah. But I said this before, I would be afraid to do that. Not because I'm like with my sexuality, it's more like the expectations would be so high because people always say that a man would be much better at it simply because you know, you know what you're working with, right. but I wouldn't do it just because I, I would have performance anxiety. Because I don't think if I'd be as graceful, you know what I'm saying? But I but I would suggest that it's not your skills that they're going for. It's like there's other things that they're finding interesting there. Oh. Like that you're straight and they're like converting yeah. you. Like there's a there's a yeah. power dynamic at play. So you can just yeah. you can just lick the tip. They'll be happy, you know? Really. Okay, cool, 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 yeah. cool. I'll take some notes. I'll write that down. I'll write that mm -hmm. down for when it's time. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> that is so funny. Well, what do you think it is that, because uh, I know there's a big fascination in the gay world with with straight guys. So do you think it's purely the, you know, because it's unattainable, it's it's like a challenge or what is the, yeah. mm, I think it's actually grosser than that. <laughs> like, I think, I think that, and maybe you may know better than I do because you probably get this a lot. So I'm curious, like what your opinion is. But I think that for a lot of guys, right, that we grow up in a world that tells us like we're less than for being gay, that we're damaged, that mm -mm. we're treated differently in the law, maybe our family disowns us, that at some point, like even subconsciously, you start to believe like what mm. it is that everyone else is saying. Yeah. And so like you don't want someone else that's damaged like you. If all gay people are kind of damaged in this way, well, what's not mm. a straight guy and so I think that's what that like represents. So that's my working theory. Yeah. yeah, what, do you, yeah. what do you think? What do you well, think? I think maybe there's also an aspect of like, you know, maybe, and that's just something mm -hmm. I think is obviously I haven't had the same experience, but I'm assuming that a lot of straight guys maybe were bullying their friends for being gay. And then mm -hmm. like, you know, there's kind of like almost like taking the power back. You know what I mean? Like, um, kind of like when, um, you know, when you when you bully by somebody, then you kind of that represents straight people for you. And then when you can, you know, turn them, it's almost like you're taking the power back from them because you're being sexual with them. OK, yeah. I talked about this in like a recent video that I did. did OK, did you see this? Are, is that why you're saying this or like, are no, you? Is no. this... I, it's just because I've like all my friends are gay and it's something we've kind of talked <sighs> about. Um, yeah. Can I tell you a story? It's really inappropriate. Sure. Oh okay. uh, yeah, I think this video. I'm. I'm. I, before I invited you on the podcast, I made peace with the fact that this will probably not be monetized. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you're making no money off of this yeah. video. <laughs> you may even like lose your YouTube channel. <laughs> I think, you know, it's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> okay, great. We'll go out with the bang. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, like a summer and a half ago, uh, I was talking to this guy on Grinder, and he was kind of like what he was in his late twenties, he kind of looked like that bully that would have like beat me mm -hmm. up in high school, but like as a 29 year old. 
And, um, and he was like, Oh, by the way, like I'm straight, I'm just on here for work. Like I'm looking to get hired. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like, great. That's not really my thing. Wait, wait, for then work? I was like, oh, 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 like for, like for an S <laughs> not like as an accountant, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait he wants, <laughs> he wants to deliver some pizza <laughs> with extra sausage. <laughs> no, listen, I'm, I know that a lot of gay men, they run Hollywood. They run a lot of, you know, I'm assuming there's in LA, you know, there's a good chance you run into some producer or somebody you can get hired for like some other Yeah. Job. Not the kind of job that he was auditioning for <laughs> got in it, Rhode got Island. Got so, yeah. Got, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh yeah, not really my thing. And then I was like, but just like out of curiosity, like how much is it? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. he was like, he was like, it's hundred bucks. And I was like, like, you're going to come to my house, like whip it <laughs> out it, for a hundred dollars. Cause like when I order takeout, it's like a hundred bucks. Like you're yeah. gonna, we're going to have a hundred bucks. We're going to have sex. And I was like, why would I let a hundred dollars stand between me and my fantasy? So he came over and, yeah. <laughs> um, and he walks in my door and he's like really tall and like very masculine. He's like, bro, what do you want me to call you? He didn't say, like, what's your name? He was like, what do you want me to call you? And I was like, my knee-jerk reaction was faggot. I was like, I want you to call me faggot. Wow. Okay. And he was like, and he was like, suck my dick, faggot. And I did. And in, like, three minutes, he came. Like, this faggot made him shoot his load very quickly. And for me, it was, like, it was what you're describing of, like, taking the, like, I'm in control. I'm inviting him to my house. I'm paying him. I'm telling him what I want to call, what for him to call me. Like, I felt so powerful, hmm. and when he and he kept calling me faggot. Well, throughout even though like, he so you felt powerful even though he was calling you a slur because he was calling me that. Huh. It, like I was, it was like I reached into the word and like took my power back. Interesting, because I know yeah. there's also something about um, you know when you when you have that word like also the n word right like I think you know black people use the word because it's kind of like they take the power back over the word like reclaiming it yeah reclaiming it right so that's interesting wow that's, yeah. that's such a deep I love it and also a hundred bucks I mean this I feel like this guy he just wants because I think if you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know like a hundred bucks that's <laughs> I know what you're saying I know what you're saying yeah but yeah. like think about it like if he's seemingly a fast comer right like he's yeah, gonna yeah. shoot his load in like under 10 minutes if he does that once a day that's like 500 bucks extra a week in rhode island that's a lot of money like you can mortgage a house off of that so yeah he's, damn how much he's is like, your christmas cabin in rhode island oh it's like free <laughs> you, it's like free it's, yeah it's it free doesn't, okay, cool. it doesn't even cost any money yeah it's so it's, cheap yeah <laughs> It's no one wants loads. to live here. It's, it's two loads per month. You can afford I'm gonna, it. <laughs> I'm going to start measuring everything by blowjobs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so remodeled funny. my bathroom. It was it was that is blowjobs. so <laughs> funny. Wow, a hundred bucks though. That's wild. Well, I was surprised by that too. By the um, because I'm you know I grew up in Europe, so it's obviously the prices are always very different. When I came to LA, I was shocked how expensive everything was. Like sex I know work. That, Sex work. I mean, I know that in um, in Germany, you know, you can like for like fifty euros, you can hire somebody at like a bordel, and it's fully legal. Obviously, you know, they wow. they have healthcare and everything. It's probably changed by now, but um, it's definitely not as expensive as here. When I hear the stories about, yeah, yeah. Well, with with Himmeros TV, the, the the website that I have, most of the models that we hire also do escorting like they do sex work. okay yeah and, yeah and so they're some of the fucking like coolest people that i know and so like yeah. i don't have this stigma around it like a lot of americans do and i really think like everyone has a price like i have a price sure. you have a price oh, yeah. like it yeah. just so happens that my price isn't 100 bucks like yours isn't yeah. 100 bucks yeah but like 80, 80, we're 85 all, for me yeah 85 yeah we're all hookers yeah. <laughs> we're all hookers <laughs> oh god that's so fun no and and so do you think when it comes to sex work, do you think in America, are you a proponent of it being legalized in America? Of course. Yeah, like it's Europe? crazy. Yeah, because yeah, it's like you yeah. can hire someone to give you a massage. You can hire someone to sing to you. Sure. Like These are all very intimate things. Like why couldn't 100%. you hire someone to have sex? Yeah, I, and I, I agree. And it's like weird how America has, um, there's a weird double standard because America, it's everything so sexualized in America, more so than in Europe, I would say. You know, like media, if you look, if you watch a Cardi B music video, like if I showed that to my German grandma, she would fucking, it's wildly sexualized, right? But then at the same time, Americans are so prude when it comes to being naked in a sauna yeah. or sex work and prostitution, you know, whereas in Europe, that's much more normalized. There's a weird, um, Americans have a weird relationship with sex in that sense, I feel like. Yeah. Well, 
we we run into it when we film because we do our, our our film shoots for Hemorrhoos TV, and and some of them are in Europe. And when okay. we do shoots in the United States, like we always disclose to the locations like that we're going to be filming gay porn. Mm-hmm. And and in the U.S., people are generally pretty scandalized by that. And I would say like yeah. 90% of locations are like, no. When we're doing that in Europe, like we hired a, um, a location in Sweden and it was this family's farm. And like they had okay. lived there for 200 years. And yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's like, oh, we'll be down like, you know, in another section of the property with my lesbian daughter and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, but <laughs> like yeah. you do know that we're filming gay porn and you're like family's farmhouse. And she was like, yeah, she's like, people have had sex in my house before. So and I yeah. was like, uh, oh, like this is not America. <laughs> no, there's there's a big difference for sure. Yeah, yeah she looked at me. Yeah, because I was so shocked. I went to New York last week and I was at a at an at an Equinox gym and I saw these dudes walk in into the sauna with shorts and shoes on. I was like, what the fuck? This is crazy because, like I said, in, in Germany, you you're not allowed to. You have to be naked. Right. Right. You know, it's so. <laughs> That you're actually you attract more attention to yourself if you if are you wear wearing clothes. shorts. Yeah, and it's you, not a big deal. You know. I saw, and it's like Americans always find that so bizarre. But when I grew up, I saw my best friend's parents. We go to the, like a beach, and they just be naked around us. And it was not a, it was just not a big deal. There's not this big like taboo and stuff. It's just something I grew up with. Um, so I think I think well, banning anything or making it super taboo is is not healthy. Whether it's like alcohol, drugs, you know, I feel like. Yeah. You're totally onto something. This is this is also my bone to pick with with YouTube because a lot of the content and I'm, you probably run into this that I upload, you know, runs into these issues around like what you can show on YouTube and it's sure, always yeah. under the guise of like, well, we don't want like we're trying to protect the children. We're trying to protect the children. And it's mm-hmm. like YouTube, first of all, you're, not, you're trying to protect your profits. Like sure, let's be 100%. let's be 100%. honest about that. You're trying it's to advertise Yeah. <laughs> right. It's that's what it is. And yeah. also, like if we want to protect children, well, guess what? Like the children aren't doing great and like our decision to not show intimacy, pleasure, bodies, what I'm not advocating for like showing hardcore porn to children, but like, sure. obviously, <laughs> but like, but like protecting children, quote unquote, from seeing nudity, from seeing connection, from seeing pleasure, but it's totally okay to show them violence. I can show someone ripping a nipple off. I can't show yeah. someone stroking a nipple. Guess mm. what? That teaches children shame and guilt. Like yeah, that, that fucks up kids. Like that's not yeah. protecting them. A hundred percent. And that's why you see it in cultures. No, no, a hundred percent. I agree with you. Also, I love that this is like the biggest fucking thing of, of, of what, are, what are you drinking right now? <laughs> it's just water. Yeah. It's okay. a big fucking American glass also, of water. Yeah, literally, it's like a supersized Coke, <laughs> Coke thing. Um, but that's why you see it in cultures like Japan, I think, where it's even more, you know, people are even more suppressed when it comes to expressing themselves. You know, it often manifests in like, in extremes. You know what I mean? Like if you look at Japanese people in because i've been to to south korea and japan where i felt a lot of su- people are suppressed when it comes to expressing emotion and love and all these things right but there's still this desire so it manifests in very kinky extremes you know what i mean so yeah. um i find that it was an interesting observation with that yeah yeah, yeah. germany turns out has a little bit of an underbelly too that's true actually i think germany's just have you been to germany uh-huh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on one second. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Sure. Someone's yeah, at my no door. Worries. Someone's at no my worries. door. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Somebody in the, in the woods came to visit you. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. That's so unprofessional of me. No worries. No worries. It's all good. It's all good. I'm getting my, mm. my bathroom renovated. He was here to do some measurements. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Um, this sounds like a beginning of like a porn intro or something. You know? <laughs> he comes totally, in, he's like, totally. I need to get my bathroom <laughs> measured. <laughs> so, uh, I'm on a Zoom call. No, I'll leave it up. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, so so about Berlin, it's like, um, so then Burkhan, the, the, down, the downstairs, like where the hardcore techno industrial, you know, dark room techno yeah. gangbang happens. And Emphasis upstairs, gangbang. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, like, because they have, yeah. like, you know, they have, like, like a scat night where, like, people show up with, like, tubaware of, like, frozen poop that they've been, like, saving all week. Do you know I, this? I didn't know that. No, I went to the just, I, I've just seen, like, people have sex and burning clubs and obviously a lot of leather and um in the dark room you know where people just you know have sex i've seen the people who basically wait when you go to the urinal and they want you to pee in their mouth 
Oh my God. Do you know this? It's like no. a thing. In, so it's like a fetish, but also there's a theory. And I don't know if this is an urban legend or if it's true, but they're saying that because most people are on some sort of substance at Burkine, that by drinking their urine, you would get some of the residue of whatever drug they took. So they're just doing it for free drugs? I think it goes deeper than that. I, I think, think there's, there's better ways to get drugs than to drink this. <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like there's wait, like a deeper desire so, there, yeah. Okay, but wait. Yeah. So are people just like, oh, yeah, like it, it's no sweat off my balls. Like it's not stealing any of my ice cream if I like piss in your mouth. Are people just like pissing it? In their mouths? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, depends. And I, I've, I've no, I've, I've been asked. I've been asked, and uh, I, I found it was a little weird because I didn't know. I know they want it, but still, there's something a little degrading about it that I didn't like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I, did you do um, it? I did not do it. No, no. Ah, okay. But I was basically at the. So the urinals is like a trough. It's more like you know, it's not like separate urinals like new. It's like literally one. You know, like a, is it called yeah. trough in English? Yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. So um, they would just basically be there in the darkness, you know, and then they come and they just basically look at you from below. What? And, like, with, their, with their big eyes and they're just like basically, this, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm not trying to kink shame here, thing. but that sounds like a horror film. Like yeah. that really sounds actually really <laughs> it's a, frightening. It's a <laughs> like, little intense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and is it women too or is it just men? I think it's generally men. I don't. Oh, I don't want to, you know, be like, you of know, I don't, women equal rights and all that. But I'm yeah. assuming it's mainly men. I'm sure. Yeah. No, no offense to the one Berlin woman who does it, but um, I'm sure it's mainly men. Yeah. But men are pigs. Men yeah. are such pigs, and it's true. It's true like yeah. straight men, gay men, we're all just pigs. We're filthy, filthy. Well, yeah. I think it's just that 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 because I see it more so with that's I always make these jokes about you know I'm German, so I really respect gay men because gay men are just as efficient as we Germans are. You know, because it's just, it's just, That's good. That's <laughs> it just gets good. straight yeah. to the point, you know? Yeah. 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 Grinder is That's very what... efficient. It's like, hey, look, How... here's what it is. Here's what's, like a, you. what's your opening line on Grinder? Like, do you reach out to people or do you just like wait and, and, and the, what's the, because I, I, I always compare like other dating apps like Tinder for straight guys. When you, when you message a girl, it's very like, you have to approach it with a lot of precaution, right? You have to be like, break the ice, maybe meet up for a coffee, win their trust, you know, make sure you're not a, you know, make them, make them trust in you. Right. And I feel like Grindr is just like straight, you start with the dick pic. Like how do you, what's your opening line on Grindr? Well, because, because on, on like you're on Tinder, you are also looking to have sex. Right. So you just have to kind of do this like dance around it, like pretend that that's not like what your motivation yeah. is or, yeah. or, okay. Well, I, I just, I just feel like with women, there is more of a, and I don't think that's, I don't think it's necessarily good, but I think with women, there is um, definitely more awareness, right? Because women usually need a bit more emotional connection before having sex. Whereas yeah. men don't stereotypically need that as much. Um, well, therefore I'm men very are much, more, yeah. I'm I'm very much a lesbian in a gay man's body. I completely Great. should have been a lesbian. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not on I'm not on Grinder. I actually got banned from Grinder for um, impersonation, um, oh. for impersonating myself. And what? yeah, yeah, they were like, "Oh, like you're impersonating Davy Wavy," and I was like, N -n -n "I, but I am." And they were like, "That okay. is wild." They were like, so here's what you need to do to verify it. And so I had to like do yeah. all these things and like put my email like on a piece of paper next to my face as if like you couldn't do that with like AI or like in Photoshop sure, or sure, something. Sure. But they couldn't like match my email because I joined through. Anyway, it was this whole thing. They couldn't validate that I am me. That's so funny. You're just too famous to be on Grindr. They were like, no, listen. That, well, it was like an existential crisis because like, well, if I'm not me, who is? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, so I got banned and I was like, you know what? Like. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm 40 years old. Like yeah, when yeah. I when I was 30, like yeah, Grinder was fun, and when I was 25, like the idea of like having, I'm 40, like I want something. To, it's not. I've had sex with some of the most beautiful people in the world. Like it's not that interesting. Like mm -hmm. I wanna, yeah. I wanna see someone's vulnerabilities. Like I wanna mm -hmm. see an emotional connection. That's the yeah. stuff that like gets me interested. Well, so Grinder is not your app. Then. Not <laughs> like, my app. Yeah. Not the yeah. Vibe. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I, that's why I feel like I should have just been. Yeah, I mean, I can relate to that. I'm also not, um, and it's funny because we both have, you know, personas online that's like more sexy and all that. Um, and I find there's a, there's a common, it, it's quite common for people who have, you know, who talk about sex to not even be that sexual in their real life. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've seen that with a lot of people, friends of mine, right? And even for myself, I mean, I've been open about this. I'm, I'm not a very sexual person at all. You know, like my, my body count is very low. 
and um, I definitely need that emotional connection. So maybe I'm a lesbian too in some in some in some ways when it comes to that. Yeah, I wonder too though, like because of how you like present yourself online, very similar to me. Like there's a lot of shirtlessness. There's a lot of there's a lot of nipples and you know body. Like yeah, do do you think? because you're so used to people trying to consume you for that, like people just gravitating towards that, that maybe you feel like a little bit more um, like there's, I don't know, you feel protective or the, there's, there's boundaries that you feel have been kind of violated. So you kind of get more guarded in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. And I've, I've, yeah. I've thought about that a lot. It is truly um, interesting that once I started, because I started with modeling, right? I, I moved to the US when I was like 19, started modeling, did a bunch of underwear modeling, posted photos on Instagram, and then I got a lot of validation for, obviously, you know, sexier photos, shirtless photos, right. underwear photo shoots, all that stuff. And then along with some, you know, sexual harassment, sexual assault from, you know, photographers in the fashion world, which is very common, unfortunately, with men, um, it almost made me associate sex, not with something beautiful I want to share with a partner, but more so with something that is purely work, right? Mm -hmm. I almost outsourced my sexuality to my my work and my public persona. And uh, I feel like there wasn't much left for myself. So now I'm in the process of reversing that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's, th yeah. Thank you for sharing. That's, that's interesting. It's what I've noticed. And I think at 40, like I'm kind of in this interesting spot because like, I'm not quite old yet, but I'm not quite young. And also, so you I'm look fantastic. This... I just want to acknowledge, I mean, everybody's thinking it, but you look fantastic for 40. Well, I mean, that's no, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's cause I don't drink. <laughs> I think that's yeah, like, honestly, me neither. yeah. 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 Well, You'll, yeah, you'll look fabulous we're forever. Just, we're just two sober lesbians right here. Be this Benjamin <laughs> Buttons, two sober yeah. Benjamin Buttons. <laughs> so um, what I notice, and like I used to live, after I lived in West Hollywood, I moved to Palm Springs, which is okay. also super gay. I know, I know. You, this is the two most gay places I know in California. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm all gayed out. At this point yeah. in my life, I'm all, <laughs> yeah, yeah. all gayed out. Um, but in Palm Springs, it's a much older crowd, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like a retirement community for people that don't mm -hmm. know. I'd say the guys are like average around like 65. So there's something that happens right around 40 around gay men. I don't know if it's true for, for straight guys too, but it's like they have a different relationship with consent and with boundaries. If you're older than 40, and this is in general, obviously like there's exceptions sure. to this, but 100%. it's like if you're older than 40, it's they assume yes until you say no. If you're under 40, okay. it's I, I assume no unless you say yes. So Does if you're sense? under 40 or if the other person is under 40? Is under the, other 40. Person's, the other person's under 40. Like they're mm -hmm. going to approach you as no until you say yes. Got it. And if they're over 40, they'll approach you with the energy of yes until you say no. When I'm Got in it. Palm Springs and I go to a bar, even if I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not drinking, but they will... Older guys will not think much of coming up to me, squeezing my chest and being like, oh, I just always wondered if your tits were real. Mm. Like that has <laughs> never happened with someone that's like 25. Like, they, they, yeah, like that's yeah. incomprehensible to like a younger mm. person. So there's this like yeah. weird relationship with boundaries that like in that older guys don't seem to have them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? That's actually a good point because I've... I mean, I, I have, I've had some experience in West Hollywood where, you know, I go, I go to West Hollywood a lot, even with my, with my fiance and stuff. And, um, I've had some experience where people just, you know, obviously it's a, it's a, I'm, I'm always like, it's not even a, a big deal. I'm saying like, obviously, you know, people are going to, you know, grab your balls a little bit, you know, it's just what happens on the dance floor, but it's usually <laughs> older guys. That's not acceptable. Yeah, I know, not, I know, but yeah. it's almost becoming so, you know, like mm -hmm. once you, once you've been in an environment for so long, like with modeling, or also in the gay world, and I'm not generalizing, right? Like most people I've interacted with were super appropriate, but then there is a lot of people, especially when it's in a party environment where you're in a group of people who, you can assume most people are going there to hook up with somebody. So in that environment, some people think that just because you're in this collective energy field of people who want to hook up, you can just touch anybody, right? So that's happened mm -hmm. a lot, but it's usually older people too. It usually is um, older gay men that uh, that just grab. I, this is one guy I was doing a street interview with, and I was yeah. asking questions about Germany, or whatever, or paying them money to do dares and whatever. I made I made these videos in West Hollywood, and this dude was like, uh, "Where are you from?" I said, "I'm from Germany." He goes, "Oh, let's see here," and he just grabs my my dick, and then I told him I was like, "Oh no, no um, don't do that." And I played it off and not. I'm I'm very non confrontational. Maybe I should be more sometimes, and I even have it on camera. And I said, "No, no, no." Um, <clears throat> And I, I joked, I, I played it off and kept talking with him. And then like he did it four times. 
literally four times after oh I clearly said no. And I was like, yo, there's such a disconnect in a lot of those gay party environments with consent. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That, yeah. That's really, that's because there's, there's also this piece of it. Like, so when, when a guy comes up to me and grabs my chest and says something like, Oh, like I just wanted to see if it was real. Mm -hmm. My, like if a stranger grabs your tits, like your knee jerk reaction is to punch them. Like, I just, I want my, I I don't, but but like, I'm like, this person just violated my, my body. I want to protect myself. Like I want to punch him. Yeah. And yet what he's saying is like, he recognizes me from YouTube. He sees me naked. He feels like he's entitled to touch my body and yeah. if I assert some sort of boundary on him, then like the narrative for him in the way that he like talks about me to other people is I saw Davy Wavy. He was an asshole. Like mm. oh there's this God, like yeah. other layer that like for goes sure. through my head of like, I don't know how to deal with that when it mm. happens. Like, especially as like a public personality. Like if you sure. punch that dude that grabbed your dick, like you'd be well within your right to do that. But yeah. then also like, then it becomes, Oh, Mario's this big asshole. Yeah, yeah, that's wild. Of course, because people, there's this weird parasocial relationship too, where people feel like they know you, and even if they, you know, if they pay eight dollars to subscribe to your OnlyFans, they feel like they have full ownership over you. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, do you have Do you have an OnlyFans? I have an OnlyFans. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I don't. Yeah. I've never actually done like a. Yeah. Okay. So naked that's so anything. interesting. I was going to ask you about that because I um I mean I watch your YouTube videos. I told you I watch your YouTube videos when I first started getting into YouTube, like I watched Shane Dawson and then your ab routine video showed up and I would follow your ab routine video. You had like yellow socks. It was like a long time ago, but you had like bright yellow socks and you had this ab. You did more fitness videos in the beginning, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, by the way, I saw the video that you made reviewing my videos like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. You and your buddy yes, did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes, it was very cute. Like, I yeah, appreciate yeah, you doing you. that. It was, yeah, yeah. It was just, I, I was nervous, like, clicking it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what, oh, no, no, what no, am no. I going to see? I mean, yeah. obviously, there's a lot of humor in it because that's what it's going to get to. Because your content shifted, obviously, from, you know, fitness videos, more wholesome yeah. fitness stuff to then, yeah. let me just more read some wholesome of that. to more wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> no because some of the title are what i will say though i love because i said this in the video too i love your um y- your your silly <laughs> your silliness in that realm too because a lot yeah. of the stuff is just so silly you almost take like this old school youtube challenge approach to super sexual things like for right. example don't get a boner challenge straight boy edition <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Right. what's up my butt challenge twink yeah. edition i was like that is so youtube but like so sexual at the same time yeah. cracking an yeah. egg with your ass anal sex yeah. toy singing so how did the transition happen from from fitness videos to more more sexually themed videos well i've been making youtube videos for 18 years so mm. i was like i was like i was 22 when i started and the stuff that was interesting for me was like some of it was fitness i talked a lot about like coming out how to talk to your family and friends because i was that's like what i was doing i was 22. sure i think somewhere around 30 is like okay yeah that's not really interesting for me and there's a lot of people on youtube who have been around for a while that are doing the same thing yeah. and for me i was like i want to make content around the stuff that i'm interested in Mm-hmm. And like in my 30s, I was much more interested in sex and sexuality and like taking a deep dive into this world where like we as a culture, where gay men, a lot of us just have so much shame and so much guilt and yeah. infusing that with like a playfulness, um, approaching it with levity and fun, mm, kind of like cool. shining a light on the darkness. So like a yeah. stupid video, like the what's up my butt challenge, like obviously like that is preposterous. It is a preposterous <laughs> video. <laughs> But anything that makes us approach gay sex, our butts, pleasure with a little bit of humor and not making it this thing that, you know, you have to sign yeah. on to like X tube at nine o'clock at night under your sheets and like jerk yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good thing. It kind of normalizes it. No, it does normalize it. I love that. Because it's like, like I said, you use the same formula that has worked on YouTube with like the typical formats of the challenge era on YouTube and applied it to that. So just normalize right. it. I love it. I love how open you, you talk, you talk about that. And it's very, it's very funny. I love, you know, it's, it's always kind of silly and yeah. 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 And, and, and I think if it was like, if it was more kind of like, Oh yeah. Oh, like, mm-hmm. like if it had a, a, 
an, an edge to it like it, it wouldn't go down as easy right like yeah, yeah, yeah. that it is kind of funny like it it makes it a little bit more accessible of course like now you couldn't do a video like the what's up my butt challenge on youtube like there's no way that i would get away with that in 2023 so you mean in terms of uh community guidelines community guidelines have I mean, yeah. it's becoming the handmaid's tale like you can't you can't even show a sex toy in use anymore and so, like, a video like that, I could not upload today. So, so oh, interesting. So, but retroactively, won't the old videos, because I've had videos where they, I've had videos, my channel was almost deleted for videos I made. I mean, for the stu most stupid things, but um, for a video that I posted three years ago, retroactively, last year, they took down, like, three of my videos, and then I had two yep. strikes all of a sudden. So, um, are you, so, the it, old videos are fine, you're saying? It, no, no, yeah, like those, those, yeah. So watch them while you can, because the, the yeah. what's up my butt challenge <laughs> days are numbered. They'll generally get removed. You, you generally, I mean, it depends what the content is. And my understanding of it is that if a policy at the time was not violated, um, you won't get in trouble. I think generally, if that policy oh, changes okay. in the future, you'll still get yeah. the video removed. But there's oh, not. Oh, got it. There's not a strike there or be, something. Right, because at the time you were adhering to the policy. Like at the time, we Got could it. show sex toys in use, and so in now use you you're can't. saying as they're being used on a human. Correct, and even Got if it's it. even if it's not seen, which of course yeah, in the yeah. what's up my butt challenge, you don't see yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, because but yeah, it's implied, I, and the implication understood. is enough. Yeah, 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 it's the handmade sale. Yeah, because I know that my videos get age restricted. I once did a video of sponsored where I was reviewing um, sex toys, and it was all com it was very comedic right we didn't even use them it was more like a comedic thing and even showing them got the video age restricted um, okay yeah. yeah oh well age restricted yeah yeah but you could it, yeah, it yeah. wasn't removed no it wasn't removed no yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's that's so interesting. navigating yeah. it's it, to me it's like a toxic relationship is like youtube's like arbitrary rules and guidelines yeah, um, around what you can show and what you can't show and navigating it it's like it it it's it's insanity and it's like, I yeah. feel like I'm always like walking on eggshells. Trying oh yeah, to like... 100%, 100%. That's why I'm, I'm rebranding like uh, Full Leaf towards like, I mean, what I do in my real life is stand-up comedy. So it mm -hmm. feels there's a big um, pre like anxiety that has been lifted off my chest just because I'm doing more wholesome videos where I don't, I, whenever I open my Instagram and, and it, it's loading and it's refreshing and buffering, I get a, I get PTSD because my Instagram <laughs> has been disabled yeah. before. Because, you know, you get that notification of like, yeah. your post has been removed, your account's been disabled. I was like, no. So now right. I'm like, you know, and I'm not yeah. posting funny German videos. I feel like a lot more. Yeah. Because it's definitely anxiety yeah. inducing. <laughs> when I see like an email in my inbox from YouTube, I'm always like, oh, <gasps> yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> like, like, what did I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then have you seen, so I had this guy on my podcast, do you know Kevin Leonardo? Mm -mm. So he's the guy, he did the Nair video. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, got, I got tagged mega in this. viral. Yeah, they were like Davy Wavy somewhere in Rhode Island upset that he didn't think of this video first. Oh my God, that's yeah. so funny. Because it's true. I mean, I could... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen, I know that on YouTube, it's because I saw this one video you have on your channel where there's this, uh, I think he's an adult star and he shows his penis to yeah. you and he had like penis fillers or something like that, yeah. right? And, also and, would not get away with that video now. Yeah. Okay. But because I think on YouTube, there's this thing where like, if it's in an edu if it's not sexually gratifying, right? If you talk about the penis fillers in a scientific way, in an educational context, it won't get taken down. Ryan, there's like yeah. a little. It's medical. Loop. That's the term that they use. Yeah. Oh, so if it's yeah, a yeah. if it's a medical video, you can show nudity. So like I did a video that was like how to clean your foreskin, and so wow. one of the models yeah, yeah. that we work with whipped out his dick and like showed the audience how to clean his foreskin. I I don't think I would get away with that now. Yeah. Because they're really yeah. like tightening their grip around these things. But yeah, there are. So there's these weird. It, it's all. It's. It's so, it's so fucking arbitrary. I mean, it is. It's, it's so, so it's it's super arbitrary. And there's this um, there's my friend who's like an OnlyFans guy, and he made this video. <laughs> it's the funny shit ever. It was taken down now, but it was up for like a year and a half. It was the funny shit ever. It was basically a video of him performing a testicular exam to prevent testicular cancer. Right. So you basically uh -huh. examine your testicles to make sure that yeah. you don't have cancer. So he would do that though, and it's the funniest setup. It was like a high def 4K. 
you know, shot <laughs> of his penis, <laughs> but just his lower body, like his abs and his penis, fully erect on YouTube. It was wild, right? So like he'd have that thing, and he's you know he's he's well equipped and all that. So then he and oiled up too, and then he's German. So with his German accent, he would just say. Yeah, hello, guys. Today, I will show you how to perform a testicular exam as he's stroking his penis and, and showing his balls on camera. So that mm -hmm. video got like millions of views. But because it's the, the purpose of this video is to show how to perform a testicular exam. Oh, my <laughs> it God. Was up and it got him so many OF subscribers, I'm sure, because all it said was just his Twitter or something like that. Um, but there's definitely but, some people who use those loopholes too for like super yeah. sexual stuff on YouTube. But yeah. you couldn't do that now. Cause like if you, yeah. if, if I, I can't even, when we film with a model and I create some YouTube content, I can't even put a link to their, to their Twitter or even say their Twitter in my video oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? because their Twitter is considered porn. And so they have this whole yeah. like policy. I mean, we're taking a deep dive. The audience sure, is just, sure, like sure. fast yeah, forwarding, yeah. but yeah, like yeah. It, it's, it's insane to like, for me to run a porn company, on my YouTube channel with 1.6 million subscribers that I can't promote to my audience mm, mm, <laughs> that wants to see it. Like it's, yeah. it's so it's, so but I mean, insane. if you mention, I guess if you mention Himeros, right? I can say, I can say Himeros TV. Okay. I can't say there's a middle piece in there, which is yeah, because yeah. the name is also a URL when you would say like, you know, dot com dot what I yeah, can't yeah, say yeah, the dot sure. because then it becomes oh, a URL. Like that's, that's how wild. fucking crazy it is. Huh. That's how crazy interesting. it is. Interesting. Interesting. So you can, you can link it obviously, right? You can just be oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like my channel would be deleted. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, interesting. it's insane. Anyway. Do you still feel like, okay. So tell me more about that. Cause I saw it. Um, when did you start that? So it's like a, it's your own, is it your own porn <laughs> studio or like what is yeah, it exactly? This is actually pretty interesting, I think. Cause it's, Obviously, there's no shortage of gay porn on the internet. And yeah. so when it became apparent that like YouTube was being more and more restrictive, like I kind of wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to have my own platform. I wanted to make the content that I want to make. It was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to create a porn website, there needs to be something that that website's offering that doesn't exist in the marketplace. Okay. And so the content that we created is centered around pleasure, like actual pleasure, it's authenticity. There's vulnerability. Some of the content is instructional. So like we'll do videos on how to be multi-orgasmic, which, oh, you know, women, women yeah. often are, but like how can yeah. guys like achieve that, how to have full body orgasms, different masturbation stroke techniques. So there's this whole kind of like instructional component to it, but really creating content that um, I would say contributes to your experience of sex and pleasure rather than like, I don't know if you've ever seen gay porn but it's pretty much yeah. the same as straight porn that it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. it kind of follows yeah. a formula it, like you're not yeah. learning anything from it <laughs> like anything no, no, no. that's gonna help no, you no 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 i've seen some i've seen some so i'm, I'm i have a, some friends who are in the industry um do you know malik i'm, I'm sure yeah. you're familiar with malik delgatti, delgatti yeah <laughs> i had him on the podcast such a fascinating guy too um so you no know, i saw some of the uh, some of the scenes at met for, for men.com yeah. Um, but I found the intros so cool and interesting. Some of the intros were so wild, but same for straight porn, right? There's some like kind of funny, uh, you know, intros with that. But the content itself is definitely more centered around just like how he would put it, destroying people and jackhammering, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like it, like the intention it, in, in mainstream porn is fine. Like it's effective at what it does. And the intention is to get you off. And it does yeah. that. It achieves yeah. it. It's not pretending to be anything more. I think yeah. the issue is that in the absence of any meaningful sex education, we then use that porn yeah. to learn from. And mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is like, okay, great. Yeah, watch that get off. But also like as a supplement, the stuff that we create on Himeros TV is something that can actually contribute to your personal journey of sexual exploration. Yeah. Right? And so yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Malik does more, great content, but he's not yeah. contributing to your experience of sex. <laughs> no, he, if anything, he makes me insecure. It's like, Jesus Christ, how do you <laughs> yeah, do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So you would yeah. say your stuff is more, also more realistic? It is real. Yeah, it's, like, it's real re stuff. Yeah, yeah. I like that. So, yeah. so like when Malik films a scene for men.com, it probably takes eight hours, 10 hours for them to film a scene. You know, like mm -hmm. they have all this kind of like this angle and this angle and this position, sure. this position. When we do it, we have some sort of concept. Like we did um, 
um, a, a recent shoot um, that was inspired by Greek gods and goddesses, the different mm. archetypes that we embody as people, but also as gay men. So we kind of connect the models with the concept and then we film it almost like an OnlyFans video. Like, okay, you have an hour and a half we're going to film it like a documentary, but just it's like only fans, but with like really good cameras and lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we just let them have the actual sex and enjoy it mm, and, yeah. and, and we capture it. So it's a, it's a different approach. And when we film, we go to really remote locations and we have a sex and intimacy coach that works with the models. So mm. they go through all these workshops to help them connect with their scene partners. It's actually really fun. And each yeah. shoot is four days. So you really, it almost feels like a gay summer camp. <laughs> No, it like, sounds like because you actually build some sort of connection because the, the performers yeah. don't necessarily know each other. It's not partners or anything. It's like two people who didn't know each other before. And then you built the intimacy between them basically for the for the scene. Correct. Yeah. So, so we'll cool. we'll yeah. survey the models of like who they want to work with. And it's mm -hmm. funny because like we'll, we'll ask them that before they've met. And yeah. then once they meet, they're like, oh, well, this person who wasn't really my type, like is actually really sexy. And I really like their energy. And yeah. so like when we're actually on set, there's all these kind of, we start to have to like shuffle the the scenes around so that, you know, cause it's like a, a lot of our attraction, even though we live in a world of Tinder and swiping. Oh sure, like, yeah, you can, it's like a energy thing yeah. in real life you feel, yeah. In real life it is, yeah. yeah. And you have to wonder like how many people are you swiping left on that if mm -hmm. you actually met them in real life, you'd be like, oh, this person is not my type, but man, they're fucking interesting. And like that yeah, actually, yeah, yeah counts more than you know malik's like beautiful yeah. chest. so did you ever star in it or are you more on the production side yeah this is like a, a thing that i've had to kind of like learn in real time because i also had this assumption i'm like i'm taking my audience along for this ride they're yeah. probably going to want me in the videos turns out they don't really care about that <laughs> like, like not not so important i mean there certainly are some people that are vocal about sure, that sure, sure. Oh, i'm only going to join if you're in the videos but when I first started, I had this assumption I would I would need to be in them. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I really I've never done anything like actually naked. Like I've never yeah. I don't know if I want to like show the show. Sure. And I almost feel like because it's been this cat and mouse for so long that like once I do it, it's over. Yeah, there's this the intrigue, right? It's almost like this mystery a little bit. There's yeah. Right. It's not gonna yeah. be that interesting. Like once they mm -hmm. see it, they're gonna be like, oh, it's just like anyone else having sex. Sure, sure. So uh, one of our first shoots we did was in Hawaii and um, it was smaller when we were first starting out. And one of the models that I hired was someone who I had played with in real life. Another thing that like you learn over time not to do. It's just very cleaner to kind of separate church sure. and state, you know, <laughs> business and pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we were filming a foot fetish scene and his scene partner who had to like, you know, um, show his feet was like, yeah, I'm happy to do it. I'm not super into my feet being licked doesn't really yeah. do anything for me. And the model was like, well, I love feet and I know that Davey likes his feet licked. So why don't we just have Davey do it? And I was like, oh yeah, I guess I'll just put my feet in it. And so I did it and uploaded the video. So that like exists, but in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, I'm signing the checks. Like I own the company. No one watching that video is going to know that that model and I have this like pre-existing relationship or connection and it just mm -hmm. looks like i'm like another creepy producer that's like oh yeah casting yeah. myself in videos do you got know it, what i mean got it, like, got it. Yeah, yeah i see how, what you mean yeah like how could i trust the models yes like how could i trust him to consent to something if like i'm also giving him the check there's a power dynamic yeah that's a there great is. awareness yeah. there's great that you have this awareness because there's def there's definitely a thing right and that's an interesting conversation i feel like also with uh, also i'm sorry there's like someone leaf blowing outside my house that's <laughs> like sh sh can you hear it or is it fine one second and now it's getting a little loud yeah, actually he, he's like right on my porch yeah okay. <laughs> i'm i'm so sorry like this oh don't worry about that. they haven't been doing it. the landscaping for like six weeks and now they're like okay <laughs> So like, wait, we, we heard there's a pocket at 2.30, that's why. <laughs> like on a Friday, too. It's yeah, like, literally. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm like, really? Yeah, so Abercrombie had this big thing where there was the boss of Abercrombie or the CEO who, who would invite models to go to these parties in Cannes and in, um, I was going to say Rhode Island, no, in the Hamptons. Um, <laughs> and it was a lot of like very wealthy gay men. And, but Bruce Weber was there and a lot of big photographers. So there was this power dynamic of like, oh, you could get a job from those people. Therefore, there was this pressure to 
say yes to any sexual advances. So then the question is, right, even if, even if they said yes and they technically consented, does the power dynamic make it non-consensual by nature just because there's such a big pressure uh, on, on the models to say yes, you know? Because they're broke, right. they're desperate, and all this stuff, you know. Right. Yeah, and the answer is of, of course, like they can't actually consent to it if, yeah, like if there's that power dynamic. Th th is yeah. this the experience that you had? Uh, th I mean, similar things. This is a very big case that just came out um, with the ex CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch, um, but that's very in line with a lot of experiences I've had, where photographers would basically um, tell me that they could shoot me for a big magazine cover, and then they would ask me if they can, you know suck my dick so then there was like this dynamic of okay i mean i don't really want to but i also don't want to you know because you're young you're insecure especially when you're 20 years old you're not as secure and confident in yourself to make a sound decision you're much more easily influenced by these power dynamics so that's always something i found problematic with any sort of power dynamic that's why i love that you have this awareness around yeah you know yeah 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 i mean i suspect that that what you're talking about has been going on for decades. The difference is now that there's, because of social media, there's like a layer of accountability that yeah. makes it different, right? That's like, it's, it's changed, it's changed the equation. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, and I yeah. think f for us, like when we're filming people, like if it was a traditional porn scene, maybe it's not a, a big deal if I'm like casting myself in the parts, but because what we're trying to get out of models is, vulnerability, authenticity, like real connection, it requires creating a container for that project where the models feel safe. Like you're not going to be vulnerable if you don't first feel safe. Yeah. And if you're in a situation where you're worried about the producer or, you know, thwarting off unwanted advances from a director or, you know, anyone else on set, like you're not going to let your guard down to get the content yeah. that we want to create. So it's almost like, by virtue of what we're trying to do, it necessitates really making a safe environment for models. It's also why we offer free mental health support for the models. And, you know, wow. there's certain things that we do that, like, you wouldn't necessarily see in a traditional porn shoot, but also yeah. maybe they, yeah, yeah. That's amazing because, like, I think I know that porn has this kind of stigma of being kind of exploitative, and you you think of like a sleazy, you know, porn studio owner on a yacht in Miami and 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 all that. So I um. Yeah, I'm glad that you're, you know, even the mental health services, that's very, that's great. Yeah. 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 It's definitely, yeah. it's a different cup of tea. Yeah. 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 So then, and, and with OnlyFans, that's never crossed your mind because whenever I talk to people in the adult field, they're all telling me that they make most of their money on OnlyFans. Studio porn is more of a, it legitimizes them. It gets them like the network and the high quality content, but most of the money is made on OnlyFans because it's kind of democratized the adult space. Um, so is that something you've never, you've never thought about having an OnlyFans or, or even managing or being in that field where it's more of the homemade adults? Yeah, well, I mean, because like, what they're speaking to is like, if you do a scene for, for a studio, you get like a one-time fee, right? Like you make yeah. a couple thousand dollars, like whatever it is. And like, that's great, but it's not going to pay your bills. And when models have OnlyFans, they get that sustainable revenue. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But like as the studio owner, like I'm not getting a one-time fee. Like I am getting that sustainable income through the subscriptions yeah. that, that yeah, people yeah. make. So it's a little bit a little bit different. And I don't have to give sure, yeah. 20 or 30% of it to OnlyFans or whatever the, the cut is. Yeah. So it's like, why would I be directing people to a platform that like I don't own, that I don't control? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And giving that platform a cut. I yeah. have thought about putting myself in the videos and you know i turned 40 this year and i had this moment of like okay like maybe i want to make a video and be like you know i'm 40 but like my sexual journey is just beginning like this is mm, like mm -hmm. there'd almost be yeah. some like purpose to it and then yeah, i was yeah. like girl i was like <laughs> relax <laughs> like, like <laughs> relax <laughs> yeah I, I was really tempted though to do it and i was like if i'm gonna do it like i want to do it in my house like i want to do it with someone that like i really like enjoy in real life and and, and i think like it would generate a certain amount of interest and like money, but I don't want to be doing it for that piece. Like if I'm motivated by like making money from it, it's a good indication that like maybe it's not, it's not yeah. the right decision for me. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's cool. And then what would you say your breakdown of your business right now? Because obviously, I'm assuming you don't make as much from YouTube because the videos I mean, are definitely demonetized. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, every yeah, single yeah. video. I was like, I was trying to find one video that might be monetized. I mean, maybe it's some ad routine video from back in the day. Um, yeah, there's a there's a few. Yeah, I make like a couple hundred dollars from yeah, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, that makes sense. Like yeah, it's, yeah. Like it's, it, yeah, no, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's crazy. Some finance YouTube creators, you know, there's some people who talk about finance and credit cards and whatnot, and they make like with with 1.6 million subscribers or however many you have, they make ridiculous amounts of money from advertisers. But obviously, you know, the content doesn't lend itself to you know being sponsored by you know BMW or something like that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like I would have to. Sorry, they're like they're right back. <laughs> oh yeah. <they're... laughs> I was trying to mute my. I was like, oh, keep talking. No. I I saw that. I was like, wait, where did the leaf blower go? It's like it came in and yeah. out. <laughs> he's like, he's like, right, right, right there. Oh um, my god! You just give him a second. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I feel terrible. Oh, it's all good. It's, it's all good. Be, it's all good. It's all good. A, no, no, my editor. Edit. Shout out to Riley. My editor's gonna have fun editing. <laughs> Thank you, Riley. <laughs> gonna, I'm so he's sorry. He's gonna be cutting around this. Yeah. So the the bis, oh, the business breakdown. So you say the, so the Himeros is your main. Is that your main business breakdown? Like your main income? Yeah, Himeros is, yeah. is my main income. It's is also it, like ninety okay. percent of my energy that like, goes into that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. for me, YouTube is more just a way for people to like get connected with what I'm doing on Himeros. So in Himeros, is that would you say YouTube is that's what drives the traffic to it, or is Himeros is it like a household name in the gay adult space right now? Yeah, it's, where it's not a it? house. It's not a household name, and that, and I'm it's, trying to yeah. change that because I mean, I've also it's a new studio. There's big studios like men.com and Falcon yeah. and all that. And that stuff has existed for, you know, like yeah. decades. Yeah. Um, and it, it's funny because people keep talking about Himeros as this like this niche studio. Like we're doing something that's like, oh, it's like kind of an acquired taste. I'm like, yeah, well, is it a niche? Like we're showing good, real sex. Like it's not like we're only showing like you know, daddies with boys or like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. leather bears, but like it's, yeah, like yeah. It, it doesn't really feel like a niche, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but one thing that we do do, this is interesting actually, is that, so I, I get a lot, we do surveys, like try to, to pull the audience, see like what people want. Mm -hmm. And when you pull gay men, what they tell you is they're like, oh, we want to see more men like ourselves. I want to see older guys. I want to see rounder guys. I want to see mm. furrier guys. I want to see yeah, a reflection yeah. of myself yeah. on your site. And I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, great. I'm like, yeah, that's fun. Like, I love to shoot like sexy everyday men, right? To like yeah. broaden like the bodies that we see in erotic content. And so when we film that content and then release it, no one joins. And then and then we film a scene with someone that looks like Malik, sure, you know, sure. with his big muscles and his big dick and his rippling eight pack, yeah. and they can't join fast enough. Mm, and I'm like, mm. okay, like this is illuminating an important truth in business, which is like, like asking people what they want is different from what people actually want. Yeah, hundred you know, like, percent. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. want, if you want to see what's on, if you want to see what someone's eating, don't ask them. Like, look what's on the end of the fork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. And then I also saw you made a video about like uh, also, uh, you know, people of color in porn, right? Like, you know, black people in porn and all that stuff. Because I feel like there's a even on YouTube, I noticed that stuff where it's like people, for example, would ask for diversity, right? And then sadly, when I've made I made these street interviews at, at Pride where I ask people questions and the thumbnail is usually me. I ask the question, there's a person, there's a frame of me asking, maybe Riley can put a photo there. So you, you, there's me with a microphone, I ask the question, you know? And then one time I made a thumbnail and I put a black guy in the thumbnail. And the video, I mean, noticeably tanked. And it's so sad to see that, right? Where like the video was a 10 out of 10. Yeah. And then just, just to see as an experiment, right? I changed the thumbnail like a few days later to like a generic good looking white guy from the UK. It was in Europe when I filmed it the video climbed to like a basically a one out of 10 and this is it's, yeah. yeah this is the story of my life and and there's a narrative around like oh i only like film pretty young muscular white guys for like mm -hmm. my youtube videos and i'm like no actually like my youtube content is very diverse the only videos that people click on and watch and guess, are the videos yeah. that show the young muscular white guys yeah yeah. And like those are the ones that get featured in Queer Tea. Those are the ones that, you know, the algorithm is like, oh, people like this. Yeah. So yeah, people yeah. see all those. And then the ones that feature more kind of 
diverse bodies and diverse men, people don't click on and so they underperform. And yeah. Which then also reinforces the, it and it's like a cycle basically, right? It, it's a cycle. And, yeah, but I also yeah. think that that there's like I can take accountability to a certain extent of that though, which is like if someone is um subscribing to my YouTube channel, like they might be doing that because like they are attracted to, you know, muscular white guys. And so then like when I create content that shows other types of people and like celebrating other forms of sexiness, like I, I may be like just by virtue of being me, right? And putting myself shirtless and whatever in thumbnails, be mm -hmm. cultivating an audience that is attracted to that particular presentation. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I have to try to sneak it in. I have to try to like like what yeah, you're yeah, doing, yeah. like put someone Literally. else in the thumbnail and, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, sneak yeah. it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a silly, it's a really silly game. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's an interesting thing with, you know, with diversity and like where the, it's so hard because like, you know, where does, it's it's a business decision, right? And where does the responsibility lie of business owners like yourself or brands or fashion brands to break that, to break that status quo? Because on the one hand, you see profits will be higher if you, you know, stick with the white guy. But then also you want to basically fight that narrative and it's it's difficult. Like, who makes the first step, and what's the responsibility of a business owner? What's a business decision, and what is racism, right? Right. Yeah. And and yeah, like, what responsibility do you have? And and for us, it's like, okay, because because this isn't Sean Cody, because we're trying to show people not because we're trying to connect people with real pleasure, and we want people to see a reflection yeah. of themselves on the website. It's important for us to film with not just guys that look like Malik. Poor Malik. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, yeah, poor <laughs> Malik. He's like poor the Malik. villain right now. He's like, you know. Malik is doing all right. Malik is yeah, doing no, all right. Yeah, no, he's doing fine. He's doing fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so essentially what I end up doing is like 80% of our content features like the, you know, porn stars that everyone knows and loves and follows on Twitter. But that content essentially subsidizes the other 20% of the content that features more everyday guys. Mm -hmm, and I yeah. think like if... I was making a purely profit decision. Like that's not how I would calculate it, but yeah. because there is heart and soul and intention and like what we're yeah. doing, it's like, it's a trade off that I like I'm, I'm willing to make and that 80, 20 balance is, is kind of the formula that I've yeah. settled on. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 It's not that perfect. Sense. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Cool. And then, uh, so what's the, what's the goal? Like, where do you want to, where do you want to take? Do you have a goal with like chimeras, like, or in general, like where do you, Davey, where do you see yourself? <laughs> Where do you oh my see God. My, yourself in 10 years? <laughs> my goal is to pet that cute cat that just jumped up on the cat tree behind you. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that? she's Susie. Susie. Oh. Yeah, she's right there. Yeah. Oh. So my, my fiance, I'm a, I'm, you know, I used to be an independent male model traveling all over the world. Now I'm engaged and I'm an absolute simp. I'm a little beta. I own, uh, I'm taking the dog out every day for her while she's chasing her dreams as a stylist. Um, yeah, I adopted a dog basically. Or I'm a stepdad now, so yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm lame now. I'm lame now, you know. But yeah, there's something to be yeah. said for that. Yeah, my goal is to pet Susie. Uh, I think, yeah. I think beyond that, you know, we have a really cool scripted project. We haven't done a lot of scripted stuff. Um, okay. And and I was very much like inspired by the format of like White Lotus. Have you seen White Lotus? Mm, not fully, but I know. But I know of it. I've seen the episode. Yeah, yeah but I'm, yeah. yeah. So we kind of yeah. took that same structure and I, I wrote like a screenplay based on that format and, oh. um, and kind of shopped it around with my audience. Like, is this something that you want? They said, yes. Yeah. So I was like, it's going to cost, you know, a hundred thousand dollars to film. We need Dang. to sell this many memberships to, to, to make it happen. Uh, and so they did. And so now I'm obligated to, <laughs> to actually like do this thing. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to do a, um, it's five episodes and we're going to do like okay. a YouTube version, kind of like the, the video that you clicked on in, in your YouTube video with the, the, um, that was very much like the acting and the, Oh my God. The, the one that, that has like 140 million views. Yeah. 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 That was yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's a similar thing, except I actually wrote this one and I've worked with a bunch of, um, like script consultants. I think it's actually, I mean, of course I think it's good because yeah, but but like I actually think it is actually good. So um, it's an actual like mini like five episode basically yeah. uh, season of a TV show basically, but it features sex, yeah, explicit sex, explicit and, and, sex, yeah. right? 
so there'll be a YouTube version that is edited around that so that it's mm-hmm. like PG 13 R, you know, whatever. Um, and, but then there'll be like the full, can you imagine like white Smart. Lotus where the models actually, or the act, the models, the actors yeah, yeah, yeah. actually had like full on hardcore sex. Yeah. Mark my words. I, I would say within the next like three or four years, HBO is going to pull this shit. HBO is going to do this. And it's going to be like this whole thing. They're going to be like, oh my God, this is like groundbreaking. They're going to film mm. a show that's, excuse me, scripted and that has hardcore sex. And everyone's going to be like, their minds are going to be blown by it. But remember that I did it first. You did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if they did it, no, listen, if, if think about this. If, say, Euphoria, right? Widely, HBO, widely successful. Sh- I think it was an yeah. HBO. Widely yep. successful show, right? Um, what's her name? Sydney Sweeney, the, the blonde right. girl. Like she, you know, she was this, you know, very sexualized in that show. And obviously she's extremely beautiful. If they did something where say you have euphoria, but then there's like a euphoria X version that's more explicit, like they would fucking, I mean, it would, it would go crazy, you know, financial, from a financial standpoint, right? Um, People would lose their shit. Yeah. People would lose their mind. There's a film from years ago, I think like maybe 2005 called Short Bus. Have you ever heard of this? Short Bus? No. Okay. I'm also German. I only know David Hasselhoff movies. (laughs) Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Or Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was Austrian though, right? He's Austrian. Yeah. Yeah. David Hasselhoff is also not German. I don't know. There's no famous Germans, you know, I feel like. Yeah. Except Hitler, but you know, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How, how close are like the cultures between germany and austria because we did a film oh, shoot. very very close very i mean i'm my hometown is like an hour from austria and it's 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 essentially the switzerland austria and germany there's some minor differences but essentially it's like the same the same ethnicity the same people it's all very precise very it's uh, basically they're all it should all be germany austria was saying, but like, <laughs> horrible like we filmed in austria it was <clears throat> horrible but like on so many levels including do you guys have the poop shelf in germany as well the poop you know shelf about? no i have yeah. no idea in the toilet like instead of it landing in water it like lands on a shelf do you know what oh I'm talking about? yes 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 some of them have it some of them have it yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know i don't Girl. know where that's from because there's some there's some place in germany where i've seen that so others don't have it yeah austria well, is a little bit more christian but yeah so that was an issue <laughs> it's like the first thing you're confronted by in the morning is like your shit oh, on a shelf yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah. it's that's like it's so like elf fun. on a shelf but shit shit on a shelf <laughs> yeah oh my god no that's definitely something that yeah 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 it's like you all want to like get in there and like poke around i i hooked up with this um this austrian boy and he was very sweet and very cute and i was like what the hell like is is this in my toilet? And he was like, oh yeah, it's like, so you can inspect your poop to see if there's worms. What? That's what it's for? Apparently. No, I thought it was so that the, I thought it was, because I know what you're talking about, but I thought it was so that the, because you know what, it, what actually bothers me is when it falls down and then there's a splash and it splashes the water that you just pee, pee, pee and basically splashes up. So I thought the shelf would prevent that from happening because it lands there well, first. And yeah, then you know you can, what bothers me? is it lands on a fucking shelf and then you have to smell your shit and like turn around and be confronted by it like first mm-hmm. thing in the morning. Because yeah, the yeah. reason it goes into the water is to hold in the aroma. Are you and right? so it's, it's landing on this. People that are listening probably know, like it's, there's a shelf, it's like a porcelain shelf yeah, and then the water is separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some toilets have it, some don't. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a Southwest, like it's, Austria is southeast of Germany, so maybe that like, close to Bavaria. Maybe it's like a Bavarian Austrian thing. We don't have in my hometown in Germany in Alpisbach and Hochschwarzwald. We don't have those. Some people so, do, no you know, no so, worms yeah. no worms in Sachsen-Anhalt. No 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 worms in Alpisbach and Hochschwarzwald. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah. You would think that the, the the solution would be like oh let's not make a shelf like let's actually solve worms in our shit like let's no fix- exactly <laughs> 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 like let's just do is that. Is that the so, reason like, though? Why That's what he is said? there yeah. a poop shelf? As to spend, okay, is to allow users to inspect their stool for any changes in color, consistency of signs of illness. Interesting. Well, That's that, a very German thing that you want to get up in there in your shit. Like this I, is. I will say that I don't mind it as much because sometimes, I mean, there's a website in Germany. I was, I was, there's a forum. It's called ratemyshit.org, which is where you could take a photo of your poop and you submit it, you upload it, and then people rate it. And it, you can, you can this win is... actually, you can win poop of the week, and it's a whole thing. 
Yeah. Is this a German it's, thing? This is German it's a, it's, thing? <laughs> must be. Anything that's like kinky like that, it must be German, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Germany's got this, like, listen, you all have this, <laughs> you have a shadow. <laughs> like, there's a, there's, a sh- there's a shadow side. We had, we. It, it was also, like, when we filmed in Austria, like, even going to the supermarket was, like, an ordeal. And, like, they scanned the groceries so quickly. And the woman was, like, yelling at me because I wasn't bagging my groceries fast enough. And she was yeah, like, Fasta! Yeah. Fasta! <laughs> and there were like berries like flying everywhere. And I was like, I was like sweating. And I was like, we're in this small Austrian town. I'm like, so clearly, funny. I'm like the busiest person in this town. And she's like, yeah, there's no one in line. And she's like yelling at me to like yeah, bag yeah, my yeah. groceries fast. No, there's like, definitely a thing. Germans and Austrians, it's culturally it's similar where like we like things to be done efficiently and fast, you know? Yeah, you were just not yeah. efficient enough, you know. I was apparently not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. So. And then, and last thing I want to talk about. So you said also you said something about like because um, I know Austin is a very it's a very Catholic place too. Austria is like you know you know more like Bavaria and Germany and Austria is definitely more Christian Catholic. Because um, you said you I saw a video or something on your Wikipedia. You come from a, like a Catholic background as well. Yeah, my family's Catholic. And actually, when we were in Austria, we filmed in a monastery. Like, that was what we rented. And it was attached oh. to a working church. I was like, I was like, y'all must need the, that Airbnb money. Because, yeah. like, they and were you like, told oh, them that it was, And you told them yeah. that it was for, like, a, a gay adult shoot? Yeah, I did. Cool. And they were fine with it. And, you know, like, the, I mean, the locals weren't particularly thrilled with having us there. But yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I grew up Catholic. My family, uh, was Catholic. Now my mom is my bookkeeper and my dad grows my marijuana. So wow, very much Damn. like fallen, fallen You're such, It's so funny how you, you move from like, um, you know, like fitness YouTube or something to like, you know, now you're like a, a drug dealer and a, and a drug <laughs> Lord and a porn, uh, porn I, king, I, porn king, like a, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. From Rhode Island or yeah, I do it all <laughs> with this, uh, such an innocent smile. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it because you're yeah. like the most innocent, like you know, sweet person and stuff. You know, like when you yeah. go out, you have like a big, you know, like a like a cane with like a big uh, fur, yeah. like an animal print fur, yeah, and like a totally. cigar. And oh my like... god! <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, my so my funny. sister when I came out, I was 17, so that was like 23 years ago. And my sister, we were going to like Easter Mass and. My sister was like, I'm not going. And my mom was like, well, why not? She was like, I'm not going to support a church that doesn't think that my brother like has the mm. right to marry who he wants to marry. Yeah. And my mom and dad were like, oh, yeah, like, I guess that makes sense. Mm. <laughs> and so that was it. And then we were no longer Catholic. We stopped going to church. So did all of your family stop going to church or just your yeah. sister? Yeah. No, my whole family. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That is that is th- that is beautiful. In a way, beautiful, though, right? I feel like the the collective support of you know, of yeah, well, your like, identity. Yeah. It was very like, oh yeah, like this, this, this doesn't make sense. Like mm. this doesn't make sense. And like, if we have to pick between like our love for our son and what this institution that gets a lot of shit wrong is telling yeah. us to believe, like we're going to side with our son. I love that. Shout out to yeah. your family. That's amazing. Shout yeah. out to the family. Yeah. yeah. yeah so now out, they're also, su- they're supportive of, of your, of your career and all that. Cause your mom is your bookkeeper. Yep, and my drugs yeah. and my dad grow. He grows some good weed too. I'll tell you that. Yeah, much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it, is it legal? Is it legal? In, or are you like just an illegal drug lord? Oh no, it's totally legal here. And I totally I, legal, I, yeah. So I've never had alcohol. I've never drank. And so you I've never, okay? So you've ever. never even tried it. Never tried it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've never smoked, but I do edibles. So interesting. That's huh. my vice. Yeah. Was that also like, did you grow up very, um, you know, were your parents strict on that or was no, it just a they're, personal they're, choice? Yeah, they're raging alcoholics. So I was like, yeah. all right, I was like, oh, I, was maybe, like I need oh, to. that's why. <laughs> yeah, I was okay. like, I need to follow so, a different path. <laughs> it's either one of the extremes always, you know, either you drink a lot right. because you're like, you know, your family, uh, you know, it's like uh, because you kind of want to rebel or because it's, you know, you, your family was drinking and then you don't. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, Which I don't, yeah. I don't think my like story is that, but I think. For Germany, I mean, there's no one in Germany that's never had alcohol, right? Like, no. Also, we have a way different. I don't know. I think it's just healthy. Going back to what we said first about prostitution and ban and making it illegal and making it taboo in Germany, everybody can drink, and therefore there's actually less alcoholics in Germany than in the U.S. Even though in the U.S. it is more controlled, and you know you can't drink when you're young and all this stuff. But when people drink, Americans tend to, and there might be more reasons culturally, whatever. 
Um, but I, I, I see a tendency to where when you ban things and make them illegal, more extreme use totally. gets promoted, right? To where it becomes normalized. It's just Europe, more healthy. Why are you here? Like Europe is such, I mean, there's the poop shelf. There's the poop shelf. <laughs> If it but weren't that for that, aside, I'd be living in Austria. Right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like Europe in general, it just like, why are you in America? Like, I want to go to Europe. <laughs> I ask myself that question every single day. No, it's um, I'm, 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 I would live in Europe in a heartbeat. I think Europe is way. I don't want to shit on America because a lot of people do it, and America shits on itself. To be fair, but um, yeah, it's more it, fun when we do it. So <laughs> we get we get bristly when others do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, for real. Yeah. No, but I think America is just um, it, it is has so many flaws when it comes to healthcare education system, right? If I want to raise a kid, which, you know, I'm, you know, I'm engaged and stuff, think about having a kid at some point where like, if I want to raise a kid, I would, I would love to raise a kid in Europe. It's so much safer. It's so much more clean. It's so much more stable. It's so free healthcare, free tuition, all this stuff. Totally. But yeah. America, if you want to do something out of the norm, if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to do something in entertainment, there's no place like America without question. Ah. There's no place like fuck. Yeah, yeah. What well, with what you do though, I feel like you could. I mean, it's a little different, but stand up comedy specifically, there's no way. There, there's yeah, I could no live in place Europe. like fuck yeah. this. I'm, I'm yeah. Do you want my passport? We can just switch. Honestly, <laughs> I, yeah, we I want an American passport. I would love that. I would love that. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. We can it. just get married. I mean, like I, I'm gonna. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. yeah, you know, we might. You know, if I kind of like, you know. If I, you know, a little, little shorter hair, maybe I can pull it off, you know. <laughs> is is yeah. your fiance, is she German? She's American. She's American. She's American. So, oh, because yeah, yeah, you're, you're gonna get the citizenship. I can anyway. I can get yeah, a green yeah, card yeah. possibly. Yeah, yeah. I win it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, you're so fine. It's it's it should it should work out. It should work out. Yeah. And okay. then so you're you're single right now? Single, yeah. Single? If anyone okay. out there is is emotionally available and okay. um, yeah. Uh, that's Lives pretty in much Rhode it. Islands, if you're emotionally then, no, yeah, no, yeah, they no? can be anywhere. They can be yeah, anywhere. I mean, yeah. yeah, if you're if you're looking for someone that's emotionally available, you can't you can't be picky about it. There's there's mm, there's yeah. probably like five emotionally available men in the world. So in the world, <laughs> I will I will travel to you. God damn, wherever you are. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. All right. Well, I yeah. hope I hope you if, find love. We'll, we'll put your handle down below. Someone yeah. that can talk about their feelings. Yeah, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I would say Europe is a is a good place for that. I feel okay. like in Europe, generally, people are a bit more in touch with that and a little, especially from men, I feel like there's a little bit more of that stigma for men to be, it's maybe also a generational thing, but for men to not be as vulnerable. That's a big thing I'm advocating for on my YouTube channel is for men to be vulnerable, to be real. Uh, bromance was a big part of my friend Travis Bryant, where like men in Europe tend to have more of that. Um, camaraderie and, and and closeness with other men, whether they're gay or straight. So I'm thinking there might be more more hope okay. there. Can I ask you an honest question? Can Please I just get honest for a second. How how much of that, like the teasing, like the the like even in the YouTube video that you where you reviewed um, my content. I don't know who you were with. It was a blonde guy. I think he was Jeff. Straight, yeah, 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 Jeff. 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 Is he straight? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, uh, sort of. I guess. Yeah. He is a, okay. Yeah. So you like almost kiss at the end of it. I'm like, okay. How much of this? How much of this is gay baiting? How much of this is modeling a like a different version of manhood for like yeah. for other guys? Like like what's yeah. the breakdown? No, for sure. So I, I of course I know I have an audience and uh, at the end Jeff he just pulled he's very he's just He's just, he's like literally that guy who will flirt with anybody and he always tries to kiss me. That's just what, what he does. But I genuinely growing up, I was so afraid to be close to other men, right? It was something that um, even growing up in Germany, there's still this like the stigma that men are not allowed to be close. And then I came to America and I realized when I was uh, getting, you know, Travis Bryant, I think he made a video about yeah. you as well. So yeah, yeah. He, he's my best friend. I mean, I, I'm going to see him tonight. He's my best friend. I love him so much. And we just had this closeness and we started cuddling and I realized how much how much I love that and how much it made my life better in a time where I was single and I really got that emotional connection that I thought only women could provide me with mm -hmm. and I got that from my best friend and it doesn't mean that you know that I'm gay or whether or not you're gay it doesn't matter there's this beautiful thing between men that a lot of men just won't allow themselves to experience. So it's truly something that I want to destigmatize and I want to also make it less yeah. of a thing for straight guys to, you know, be close to their buddy. Even if you kiss another guy, I want to just be like, it's an experience, it doesn't matter, right? And I feel like a lot of straight men 
would benefit from that. It's almost like demystifying it, kind of like what you're doing with talking ab about um, gay sex in a playful way or sexualized things, where it just like makes it more, you know, ma makes it more normal. Yeah. I think straight men are starved for men in general, but also especially straight men are starved for connection and mm -hmm. intimacy. Like it's what we all want. And there's flavors of that that are not sexual. Yeah. That like, yeah, I was talking with a, a friend about this before the the podcast and he was like, no, nah, no, nah, like that's like, that's super gay. I'm like, no, nah, it's, it's gay if you're being turned on by it. Yeah. Like if you're like doing it and you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, this is like so titillating. <laughs> but yeah. if you're just doing it to express your connection and yeah, yeah. like it's actually, I mean, women do it all the time. And that's what not, I'm saying. Women always make out. It. And I think it's beautiful how women express love to their friends. They cuddle in bed. Well, making out. Yeah. I mean, that's a little extreme, but like, but like they hold but even, hands. No, they, but yeah, even that, they do why, each the, other's why hair. the fuck not? Why the fuck not? I've kissed Travis before. I loved it. It was a beautiful thing. Of It's, it's not like. I didn't get an erection, but like, it was just this beautiful expression of love to my best friend. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. this is also with my sexual, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't like calling myself straight. I use the label for simplicity because it's not, you know, when you title a YouTube video or something, right. um, it makes it easier, but I don't think I'm a straight, I don't think anybody's hundred percent straight. Um, I just don't express, I don't experience sexual attraction to men in the same way, but I'm attracted to men, right? I see a man that's beautiful. I've, I've wanted to kiss guys where I feel that attraction. So I'm definitely not straight, I think, you know, but there's not the and same the level of physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now the leaf, blower. <laughs> the leaf blowers are back. <laughs> the leaf blowers are back, yeah. Oh my God. But no, oh it's God. good you bring that up because I do want to be careful with that because now that I am engaged and I have a girlfriend, on YouTube also for a long time, I was on this journey of like exploring my sexual identity as well. Because, you know, I've, I've been in the modeling world and it's also confusing and I was confused with my own sexuality as well. Very problematic relationship with sex as well, which I got into and I'm public about that with like sexual trauma. So it's very confusing, right? So um, now that I have a fiance though and I'm more secure in that, I definitely want to make sure that it doesn't seem like I'm pretending to be something I'm not. Like I don't want to pretend I'm gay. But the, the closeness with other guys is something I, I believe in so much. And let me show you this. I made this calendar about it, like the bromance calendar. Oh which is gosh. basically like it's basically Deceased. like you know with with a lot of like you know my, my friends we just have like you know it's like closeness between men let me show you one with my dad so that's like a calendar Aww. i make also like little plug guys if you want to get the calendar it's available now bromance.shop you can get the calendar so just like celebrating that's something i believe in so much is like bromance between you know men in general so yeah that's my friend jeff hugging a tree in germany yeah, that's fine. <laughs> who was the uh, photographer? Um, I'll t I have a lot of friends that are like photographers. Um, this is my friend, Tra this is Travis as drag queens. I mean, a Target supermarket. <laughs> you know, um, it's a bunch of my it's a bunch of different friends. Some are like um, some are uh, professional photographers. My friend Kevin Roldan. Some are taken by my mom in Germany. You know, so yeah, this is with Reno Gold in Miami. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Well, hey, um, the leaf blower is back in full force. <laughs> it, there look, it looks like there's a tornado outside my window right now. There's like, I'm so sorry. I feel it's, all good. it's all good. I also know you have a yeah. heart up, but um, no, I appreciate it. I think it was a very fun conversation. I appreciate you so much for, for doing this. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> sorry for the background noise. Yeah. It course, was great. It was great chatting with you.